So welcome back. You know, it's often a disease that considered only affects women, but 10 million men in the United States will also be affected by an eating disorder at some time in their lives. And former Seahawk player Patrick Deveni, Deveni? Deveni, yeah. Deveni, I said it right the first time, <laughs> I knew it, um, joins us now to talk about his own experience with both how male and female athletes struggle with this. Would you share yeah, your experience? Yeah, so thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. I think, um, first and foremost, I think there's a difference between um, eating disorders and also mental health. Mm -hmm. and. They're very much the same, but the number one driver, and I think being in the state of Washington, especially with Tyler Helensky and being a former CU buff, um, that loss of identity is a really big crisis. And for me, when all of a sudden you're going out, running out in front of 75,000 people and you have game day in Pullman this weekend and all this kind of fame that comes associated with sports, um, eating disorder kind of became my advice and how to deal with that pressure. And Athletes in general, it doesn't really matter what sport, but I think um, it's very much stigmatized to women athletes and women in general. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, especially in like performance sports like football, those triggers just seem to be the norm. Yeah. And so it's kind of a, it's a lot bigger of an issue that most males can't associate with. And that's really hard because it is already hard enough to get men to open up to talk about certain things. And a lot of people do associate eating disorders with, oh, wanting to be thin, wanting to be skinny, when it's really kind of about control and having to control any part of your life you can, right? That, no question. And I think that's the hard part is when you do look out and you try, as a male, and you try to find any other males talking about it, it's not an issue that's really be, being publicized that well. Yeah. And that's kind of the hard part is trying to just raise the awareness and change the stigma behind it. Yeah, we need to get rid of the stigma. I mean, come on, it's ridiculous that we, everyone should feel comfortable talking about these things. It's not scary, but it is scary to talk about. So where can students go, young athletes go to, to get help? Yeah, so I think I do a lot of work with ERC, Eating Recovery Center. There's mm -hmm. a big um, push here in Seattle and same with organizations like Project Heal. Um, really just reaching out to anybody in the community to find out. I'm not a clinician, so most people come to me and ask me if they have an eating right. disorder. And, I just know my own experience, but there is a ton of help, and those are definitely very good kind of sounding boards to figure out kind of where to go. And good for you for using your platform, this incredible platform you have as a former football player to share this. I mean, this is awesome. I know you said you're not a clinician, but can you give us some signs that anyone should be worried about, like siblings or parents can, yeah. can look for in someone? Yeah, so I think for me, I, my life was pretty much dictated by food. And that was kind of my biggest concern when it really became um, trying to find myself, especially after football. Um, when I would wake up in the morning, the number one thing I thought about was what I was gonna eat for dinner, how that was gonna affect the rest of my day. If I ate something quote unquote bad or demonizing foods, mm -hmm. um, good versus bad, uh, it becomes a really big issue and you really kind of live in this mental game going back and forth yeah. trying to hold conversations and you really can't. So that was kind of my number one tell sign when I really reached a point of isolation that um, that food was really dictating my life. And I think if most people find themselves in that situation to really reach out and see, because you shouldn't be walking around concerned mm -hmm. about necessarily macros or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, every last question, quick question, who helped you? Uh, I actually found out about it through a podcast, oh. so which was pretty unique in the standpoint that I was isolated alone as a male by myself in my house. I don't know if I would have found the necessary resources to reach out um, had I not been alone. Yeah. So. Thank you so much for Thank sharing. You. I and you're not it. alone, and neither are you out there. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. All right, we'll be right back. It.